Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael. I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? This is take two. This is take two. <laughs> take one didn't go so well. <laughs> well, I did, at least we didn't get very far into it. Yeah, we'll have to. I'll keep my eye on the on the ticker over there and make <laughs> sure it, it keeps coming through good. It was literally like three seconds. Yeah, and then auditions decided it didn't want to go any farther, <laughs> and we almost had to reboot the computer. <laughs> Almost. Not yeah, quite. No, no. I had to get creative to shut down auditions, though. Yeah. Um, so, here we are again. Uh, this is the week before Christmas. We are planning on doing a podcast after Christmas, right? As far as I know, the day after Christmas, Thursday, should be a go. Okay. Um, like I say, you know, anything can happen between now and then, but that's definitely the plan. You get that, everybody? We're not taking a holiday. Uh, again. <laughs> is again. The, is the day after Christmas a holiday? Well, no, but I mean, you know, a lot of people take off the entire week between Christmas and New Year's. This is true, my wife's And the week before. So. And the week after a lot of times. Like, what was a a two-week vacation when I was a kid has turned into a three- or four-week vacation. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got New Year's right there, you know. And Thanksgiving did that, too, by the way, like thinking about school specifically. Oh, yeah. Um, Yeah, when I was a kid, we got Thursday and Friday off. Yeah. Yeah. and right. I think maybe before I ended, they added Wednesday because so many people just didn't come in on Wednesday because they were traveling. <laughs> right. Um, but now it's the it's the whole week. Like, you yeah. get a whole week off for Thanksgiving now. Well, they need it. Kids these days are stressed. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> things are much tougher. No, yeah, no joke, man. Than, it's a, it's yeah. a hard world we live in, I yeah. tell you. Yeah. <laughs> so. It certainly is. That's what whiskey's for, though, right? That's right. Yeah. Jingle, jingle. Um, yeah, this is how we're, we're going to do, uh, what is it? Carols or whatever with, uh, ice in the glass. <laughs> Jingle all the way. Jingle all the way. Well, there's quite a bit has happened in the last week. I mean, I, frankly, we could spend an entire episode still talking about the Afghanistan papers, but, yeah. um, I mean, I'm, I'm leaving research to the rest of you at this point, although <laughs> I recommend you look into it, uh, further. Although it's it's been brought to my attention actually that a lot of people don't care about the foreign policy stuff. <coughs> really? Yeah. Um, I, I think they... that means that that we're not doing our jobs correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Because it's yeah. like the most important thing. It is in many ways. It is. Yeah. I mean, it's... I understand it seems far away, and so why you don't think that it matters to you, yeah. but uh, you know, Patriot Act. Yeah. Militarization of police. Yeah. I mean... Oh, those those things are very real. And it's the stuff that we're going to talk about tonight, too. The IG report talking about the FISA process. Yeah. That's... I mean, to me, that stuff's just scary, especially with the Patriot Act stuff and the stuff mm-hmm. they're able to do um, basically since 9-11. Um, it's, it's scary to me. I mean, that's that's just not... That's not the society I want to live in. Yeah. You know, is what it boils down to for me. You know? Yeah, um, this is this. These are not signs of a free society. Yeah, right. Um, there's, uh, I think it was Solzhenitsyn um, who said something along the lines of uh, a state of war serves only to um, encourage authoritarianism at home, or something along those lines. Yeah, um, that's very true. Yeah, I mean it. It just one seems to bet the other. You know. Yeah. Well, you got to keep everybody safe. Exactly. <laughs> um, I actually, I was saying to a friend this week that uh, at some point in the future, don't worry, people, we'll get into it in a moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, in the future, I do want to do maybe one of these kind of evergreen where we record it, and then if you know somebody's unable to make a podcast, then we can we can put it up instead, like we did with the rights one. Yeah. Um, but uh, I do want to do a podcast on my general disdain for democracy. <laughs> that would be a fun one. And. Uh, you know it, what? I guess what I've been thinking about this week is that the our, our founding fathers um, created a system that was that was never intended to be democratic. Yeah. And in fact, they went out of their way to avoid democracy. Well, we're, we're a republic. I mean, there, there's a big difference between a republic and a democracy. There is, and they tried to keep democracy out of the federal level as much as they could. Yeah, like intentionally. It wasn't yeah. an accident. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a, f- a fear of democracy. And so, but the point being that our federal government was never intended to 
um, carry out the dictates of the masses, yeah. of, of the majority. It was intended to um, protect the uh, rights and liberties of the individual. Yeah, I can see that. And those two things are often at odds. I think we're seeing that more and more. Oh, but, we are right now, yeah. Uh, anyway, that, like, that's a discussion for another. That's just a teaser. <laughs> There's no telling <laughs> yeah. when that episode's coming up either. So. I don't know, man. That'd be a fun one to do. We may need to make a special day. Yeah. During well, the holiday. Well, maybe. Um, you know, you got a bunch of free time over? No. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I work in retail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is my busy time of the year. But we should, We I think we should try to make some time to do that. Yeah. Because I think that'd be a fun discussion. Mm-hmm. I work in finance, and so I've got a uh, payroll and end of year stuff, and oh man, and, yeah. So, um, but I'm, I'm getting a little bit of time with uh, my brother in town. Not yet, but it will be. That'll be fun. Anyway, so the this and crazily, this isn't even the big news of the week, but um, <laughs> the uh, IG report uh, from IG um, in- Inspector General Michael Horowitz came out. Um, actually, did it come out this week? I guess it came out last it week. It actually but, came out last week, yeah. yeah. But we haven't but had a chance been, to talk about it. Yet. Well, we haven't had a chance, and there's been some people in the news talking about it. And I, I know Barr did an interview mm. with it. and some, So, I mean, it's it's still been, things have still kind of been dribbling out about it. Well, there's a few things to remember about the IG report as you go through it. Um, one is that it looks only at the uh, FBI's Crossfire hurricane investigation. It does okay. not address the wider Russiagate issues. Okay. It's, it's only about the FBI's investigation. Um, the IG works for the Department of Justice. Uh, they don't step on other departments' toes. Okay. So it doesn't address any of the CIA stuff or anything else. Um, it's only FBI. And uh, it, you know, some media outlets. And people like uh, James Comey, who, by the way, uh, refused to speak to the IG during the investigation. Yeah. So is it my understanding that he intentionally didn't keep up his security clearance so he wouldn't have to do that? That's that's what I understand. That's what I understand. That's my understanding. Now, yeah. I, like I say, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I don't think I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was my understanding, too. But I, I hadn't verified that, so. Yeah. Um, but anyway, some people out there are claiming uh, that the IG report exonerates them from wrongdoing. I mean, that was the headline the oh, day yeah. it came out. Um, I just wanted to point out that there's no more exoneration in, in the IG reports than there was in Mueller's report about Trump. <laughs> um, the, yeah. the no exoneration cuts both ways. Yeah. All right. um, and uh, in fact, the uh, Horowitz said... Um, quote, it doesn't indicate anybody at the FBI who touched this, including the leadership, end quote. So he was very explicit about how it, you know, he didn't say that there was no wrongdoing. And that's not the purpose of the IG report. And that's what I, the other thing that I wanted to, uh, to point out. Um, He said that there, now he did say there's no documentary or testimonial evidence that errors were intentional. Um, but he also said that he was unsatisfied with the explanations that he received, Yeah. but his job isn't to determine what's right there necessarily. Uh, his job is, is a, it's a procedural review. It's kind of like an internal audit. Okay. Right. Um, he's not there to determine criminality. Uh, he's, he is to accept testimony at face value. Okay. So basically whatever they say is. Yeah. So is it somebody else's unless, job? Unless there's evidence to the contrary. Okay. And like explicit evidence to the contrary. Yeah. Um, so is it somebody else's job to come behind him? and? Well, then it's up to the Department of Justice to see how they want to pursue it from there. Uh, so if they want to dig in deeper, they yeah, can. Yeah, so if Barr wants to put a real investigation on this, he he can. Okay. Like a criminal investigation on this. Yeah. Um, he can. And he may. He he's sent some signals that he may or I mean I don't know the kind of the signals the way I've been reading the signals is that he's probably not going to. Yeah, uh, he has made his career covering up stuff, not exposing actually, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't. He he seems like a a team player when it comes to the to the agencies. Yeah. So, um, but let's address some of the the real issues that the IG report does bring out. Okay. Um, now, a lot of this centered on the Steele dossier. 
Yes. I, I love how <laughs> I remember like, the steel dossier. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep calling it the steel report because mm. um, much as they would like for it to, I don't quite understand why using a French word makes it sound more believable. <laughs> yeah. Or legitimate or whatever. Um, Saying the, dossier is fun though. Okay, well, I mean, you can say dossier. <laughs> I'll if you say want. dossier. That's fine. Um, so it, this whole thing was just this big loop, uh, and while Comey originally said that it was just like it was one of a mosaic of facts that they used to get the FISA warrant, um, Horowitz said that the Steele report was quote central and, es- and essential to obtaining the FISA warrant. Um, and it's, and it was a bunch of junk, and they knew it. Yeah, so so they were basically making stuff. I mean, because the my understanding of the, the Steele dossier mm-hmm. is that this was all bogus information anyway. Yeah. Correct? They, well, I mean, I don't know how, it, I would say it was bogus as a whole. Okay. I, I mean, there's probably accurate information in it. Okay. Um, I mean, everything starts somewhere. It, Every story starts somewhere. Yeah, it's, there's enough things that have that have big enough question marks next to them yeah. that you can't really trust any of it. Gotcha. Um, it has not been corroborated. Okay. Now, this is the same, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I may be, but this is the same report that um, that showed that, like, that claimed that Trump had been, like, having hookers pee on him in Russia and stuff that was, I thought, th- this is the report that had stuff that was wildly inaccurate in it. Right. Yeah, I mean, do we know that it's wildly inaccurate? Well, my understanding was like he wasn't even in Russia during some of these times. Well, and that's that some, probably true. That a lot of the stuff like didn't add up. Mm-hmm. So, but we, yes, we're talking. We are. This is the. Yeah. This is in fact that same report, though. Correct. I, I am shaking my head, but this is radio, so y- <laughs> okay. yes, okay. yes, it is. Cool. Um, All right. And but the the main thing that they did with the Steele report is that they. It had information about Carter Page having ties to Russia. Okay. Um, and that's what they used to pick up the FISA warrant. All right. All right. Um, now, I said that none of this has been corroborated. Some of you that had paid really close attention to this, although I don't know why you would, but some of you that may have paid really close attention to this, probably because you hate Trump, uh, may have come across the Michael Isakoff article from way back um, that uh, published this. It, I think it was Yahoo News or something, yeah. um, but published information from the Steele report. Uh, although at the time, um, he didn't say that that was his source, uh, but it turns out that it was. Okay. Now, what's interesting about that is that Steele was able to use that, or the FBI yeah. was able to use that as a corroborating source for the Steele report. <laughs> Really? Right. One of these loops again. Though. Yeah, I mean, it, it is called in the intelligence community an information loop. An information like, loop, yeah. You have crea- and we've talked about these kind of things before, we where uh, it, information is intentionally less, and then the article, based on that leaked information, is used to corroborate <laughs> the information that they leaked. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this is... This is apparently like a big deal in the intelligence community. Like, <laughs> this, if you can pull this, this off, like, woo, this way is to like go. a big part of this is always the goal, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and that's what happened here. Yeah. Um, now, and what we find later is that Page Carter Page, yes, he had contacts in Russia. He was working in Russia, um, but he was in fact um, a source for the CIA. Um, he was providing intelligence to the CIA during uh, his activities in Russia. Um, and in, and the other thing that we find again from Horowitz is that an email from the CIA confirming that he was a source for them, uh, a source of information from them, was actually altered uh, yeah. by uh, an FBI agent or attorney or something, um, Klein Smith, um, to say that he did not provide intel to the CIA. Oh, really? So this is one of the um, the accidents. Yeah. Um, one, you know, one of these 17 significant errors. Ah, ah I right. like that. Um, this one I'm pretty sure is actually going to be prosecuted uh, yeah. because there's no way around saying that this guy did something wrong. Yeah. Like, this was not an accident. Yeah, right. This, right. this was intentional. Um, and, uh, you know, what, what's more, though, is that they use this to get the FISA warrant. Um, and they maintained the FISA warrants. They renewed the warrant three times. Now, what Horowitz said that there is that there was reason to do an investigation. Yeah. I don't disagree. There was reason to do an investigation, but they persisted in the investigation long past their reason. Yeah. Um, 
And in fact, he says that the uh, uh, factual assertions relied upon in the first FISA application targeting Carter Page were inaccurate, incomplete, or unsupported by appropriate documentation based upon the information the FBI had in its possession at the time the application was filed. Wow. All right. So they intentionally left out um, information that would have called into question the information that they submitted. They were using to get the warrants. Right. Yeah. And they did this over and over again. Really? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, um, when interviewed by the FBI, one of the sources for, for Steele's info in the report... Um, said that he had misreported that Steele had misreported uh, allegations of blackmail and collusion. Um, that he, that this guy never told Steele any of that is yeah. what he said. Now you have to bear in mind this is after you know that this guy could be trying to cover his own butt at this point. Yeah. Um, he could be lying too. Yeah, you don't know. Um, what I find interesting about it though is that the FBI then reported to FISA that Steele's source appeared truthful. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't tell him. That he appeared truthful that Steele was lying. Yeah. That, that's not the part that they... They just said that he, the source appeared truthful, giving yeah. the impression that the information provided was, was truthful. accurate. Yeah. Not that he was being truthful about the fact that the information he provided Steele was nothing what Steele oh, reported. Wow. wow. Well, that's like... That's incredibly yeah. dirty. Like, it's, I an, mean, it's an error, though. <laughs> yeah, I'd say Significant it is. Significant error, <laughs> yeah, right. according to the report. But an, an error. Oh, um, wow. And <laughs> so they, like I said, they renewed the warrants multiple times. And I, the purpose seems to be um, that they wanted to make use of the two hop rule, um, which, okay, so what it allows is that when you get a warrant f- to surveil a person, um, you can surveil then anybody that they contact. That's okay. one hop. Yeah. And then anybody that those people contact, that's wow. your second hop. Huh. All right. It used to be, I, I don't was... remember, it used to be like five hops or something oh, like really? that. Oh, really? Wow. Um, but they they rolled it back to two hops because statistically five hops from one person gets like almost the entire human race. <laughs> I mean, like think uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, right? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> wow. So, um, so they at least rolled it back Man, to two hops. Two hops seems like too much to me. Well, yeah. I mean, it probably gave them the opportunity to surveil everybody in the Trump campaign. Yeah, easily. Like from Trump all the way down to the lowliest to staff the, guy. Yeah, yeah. I bet it does. Yeah. Um, and that seems to have been the purpose. Yeah. And the reason I say that is I, I think it was Brennan, um, who was CIA director at the time. Yeah. Um, I, I could be wrong about who this was, but I'm pretty sure it was Brennan whose analysts at the CIA, by the way, uh, dismissed the Steele report as internet rumor. Oh, yeah. He disagreed. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, or he didn't care. That's more likely. Yeah. Um, informed the Russia that this investigation was going on. Okay, that was Brennan. That was absolutely Okay. Brennan. Yeah. Um, so he tells Russia that this investigation is going, like, we're, we're on to you. You better stop this yeah. kind of thing, right? Yeah. Because then but right behind him, not long after that, Obama did the same thing. Mm-hmm. Obama said the same thing to the Russians. So they let the Russians know that, hey, we're on to you. We know you're up to something. But they didn't bother to do that for the Trump campaign. Yeah, and that seems like a first step, Which right? Seems like, if like, you think that a guy in the Trump campaign, Carter Page in this case, yeah. is, uh, is a spy for the Russians or is somehow working with the Russians, it seems to me that if this is a concern of yours, that maybe the one of the first things you might do is contact um, Trump's chief of staff yeah. and say, hey, you've hired this guy who may be working for the Russians. We thought that that might be a concern of yours. Well, and, and all you have to do is look at the inverse of this. And if all of this had been going on with the Hillary campaign, you know they would the first thing they would have done was contact contacted her campaign and been like, look, we think y'all have hired somebody y'all shouldn't have hired. Like, um, or just about anybody else. Well, I would say just about anybody else, but that was the election of the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, if, if and and it's not really hard to make that leap to believe that they would have contacted one, and and they did obviously didn't the other. Yeah, and my general understanding of criminal investigations, general procedures, um, is that you don't contact the person you're investigating. You yeah. don't tell them that you're investigating them. Yeah. Um, Now, my father uh, worked for the FBI for a long time. I had a little talk with him about this. Um, He was saying in the IRS, that's the first thing that they do. But it's a different kind of crime. Like, you can't, this is a 
crime that happened in the past and it's all in black and white. You can't really change the information after the fact. Yeah. Um, it, this kind of criminal investigation, I don't really feel works that way. And yeah. my father and in his investigations said, why in the world would you tell the guy that you're investigating them? <laughs> right. like, you want to get everything figured out first and then confront them and about then, it, right? Absolutely. Um, so, But since they... Uh, the claim, though, is that they were investigation, investigating Russian influence in the campaign, yeah. right? That's what that's, we hear yeah, over and over. That's again. what you hear. Yeah. Um, and that they weren't, and they weren't investigating the Trump campaign. Yeah. Another thing that we hear over and over again. Yeah. I, I think the fact that they notified the Russians, but they didn't notify the Trump campaign, introduces at least some questions about who was actually the subject of the well, investigation. And it pretty well tells you everything you need to know. I mean, you know, like I said, there are different. Approaches, yeah, different approaches to investigating. Yeah. I mean, the idea with uh, contacting the subject of your investigation is you get them on record, yeah, right from the beginning, and then you can disprove what they've what, what already they've, told you. Yeah, yeah. Um, but and maybe you know, I don't know. I we're not getting into all that, I suppose. But <laughs> um, anyway, I, like I said, I think that it at least introduces some questions about who the real subject of the investigation oh, was. Yeah. Um. Now, Comey did an interview, too, yeah. uh, afterwards, um, after this IG report came out. And um, he did an interview with Chris Wallace, and I think that actually Chris Wallace did a nice job of challenging um, Comey, uh, specifically about what he referred to as his victory lap, um, about being exonerated by the report. Yeah. And, uh, but there were some things that Comey said that just blew my mind. All right. So, um, I, and I'm going to do this whole quote, and I'm going to come back to a part of it. Um, he did, when pressed, finally, Comey, say, um, I was overconfident in the procedures the FBI and Justice had built over 20 years. I thought they were robust enough. It's incredibly hard to get a FISA. I was overconfident in those. He's right. There was real sloppiness. Okay. Here's the part that stood out to me. It's incredibly hard to get a FISA. Yeah. I, I mean, anybody that has a little faith in the government is going to find that hard to believe. Like, in, just saying those words, I don't believe that. Yeah. Like, well, the FISA approves greater than 99% of requests for warrants. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they, they'll make the argument that this number is misleading uh, because they send – because it's not an antagonistic process. So they, yeah. send, um, they send requests back. Uh, applications back to the submitters um, and, you know, say, well, this isn't going to get approved. You can't, you know, this one won't get approved, et cetera, et cetera. Now, I suspect that that's probably true. But I think that the way that goes is actually more likely, hey, um, we got your application. Uh, We can't put it through like this. Um, If you will just uh, change this phrasing or uh, introduce this kind of information or, you know, just tell us these kind of things, um, because the way it is, uh, you know, we can't do it. But if you'll if you'll make these changes that I'm telling you specifically to make, um, (laughs) then we can justify it within the context of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act and then we'll approve it. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure just the act of having one sent back. Probably whoever the attorneys is and people who are writing these things are like, oh, we, we screwed up the, the language. Let's just resubmit it under new language. Yeah. And, and it'll, we know it'll go through under the different language. Right. I mean, and there's no reason not to believe that's not the way it works. Yeah. I mean. Now, um, Comey did say, uh, because the most important question is, is it systemic? Are there problems in other cases? And I think that this is the most important question. Yeah. Um, because I know that people get really don't like Trump or really do like Trump. There's a there's, there's a big not divide. A on lot this. of middle ground. Yeah. So <laughs> unfortunately, there's a bunch of people out there that'll say, "Oh, well, Trump sucks. They should do whatever they need to do to get rid of him. This is all fine." Yeah. Um, and there are people out there that said, "Well, this should have never come up. You know, there should never have been any kind of investigation at all. It was stupid." You know. I think both those groups are wrong. Yeah. Right. I, I, I think that um, that there is enough question here that it would be worth opening an investigation. Now, yeah. FISA question is something else entirely, <laughs> but because they obviously went out of their way to mislead the FISA court yeah. um, in order to get the warrants approved. So I don't think that there ever should have been a FISA warrant. Okay. Um, but I do think that it's fair 
if you have questions about uh, somebody in a campaign being a foreign spy, yeah. to maybe open an investigation. Yeah, maybe this is worth looking into. All right. On the other hand, um, if you're one of those people that thinks, oh, well, Trump sucks, all right, just take Trump out of it. Yeah. Just start thinking about this as just like a general thing. Um, th- the idea that this is the only case where the FBI intentionally omitted or altered information to get a FISA warrant is naive. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. No matter your perspective, uh, whether it's more important to nail him or to be careful about the investigation, um, if it happens to candidate or President Trump's advisors, uh, then it happens to normal citizens. Yeah. And- that every single one of us is subject to this kind of treatment of the FISA court. Yeah. And the whole thing, I mean, all right, so... There was, because of the, the you know, quote-unquote gross misconduct or however you want to characterize it, um, there were a bunch of lawmakers that suggested that Congress should maybe amend the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance, Surveillance Act uh, to tighten permissions for national security wiretapping. Well, how about we tighten it to the point that you can't? Right. Right? Um, I mean, how about you just abolish, abolish the secret court entirely? <laughs> this is supposed to be a free country. Free countries aren't supposed to have secret courts. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> um, and but here you've got you know kind of the will of the people after nine eleven, which is why our government wasn't intended to be you know carry out the will of the people. It was intended yeah. to protect people's rights, and that includes the right to privacy, yeah. which is very expressly there in the Fourth Amendment. Oh yeah, without um, question. And and this is something that has been just thrown away in the wake of all this. Yeah. And this is a good example of it. And so here you are with um just think if it was you. Yeah. yeah. In your house. Yeah. Yeah. So and they're watching all your friends and yeah. I, I guarantee you in this country, if they go two hops yeah. from you, no matter who you are, yeah. they're gonna hit somebody who's a criminal. Yeah. Yeah, without question. I mean, I, I would say. I mean, there's there's enough. And when you say criminal, I don't mean obviously not like somebody violent. It's not hard to break laws in this country. When you have as many laws on the books as there are, it's it's not. I mean, a criminal is a is a vague term as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Well, there's a whole bunch of damned if you do, damned if you don't scenarios. Yeah. Exactly. So. So no matter what you do, you'll end up being a lawbreaker. Yeah. Um. But. I mean, there are a lot of people that do. I, I mean, just think that there's a bunch of drug dealers out there. Yeah, yeah. And okay, and so that's one kind of criminal. What about drug users? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? It's true. Like, yeah. You know, your a friend of your friend might actually buy and smoke marijuana. Yeah, there's a strong chance of that. Yeah. And no matter who you are, yeah. no matter what kind of circle you keep, because I know you know a lot of people take pride in that they keep a you know, clean circle or whatever, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's just, it's just the way it is. So, and you know, there's, you know, people trying to make the case that this is just incompetence, et cetera. Um, I don't, I, th- I don't, I think it's very hard to make that case because all 17 of these quote unquote significant errors lean toward justifying the warrant. Yeah. Um, and if it was, if it was just accidents, if it was just incompetence, you would think at least one of those significant errors might go the other way. Yeah. You're right. All right. I, I'd agree with that. I mean, at some point, you'd have to have somebody that like was honest about what's going on here. Mm-hmm. So, um, and I, I think that this speaks to a, a broader issue in this anyway. Like, I am under no illusions that the director of the FBI is a political position. I mean, it absolutely is a political position. Yeah. All right. I, I mean, um, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, in a, in the heads of all these agencies, it's a political position. Yeah. Um, and they have certainly, uh, in this case, and in the case of Hillary Clinton, I think they proved that they were, the FBI itself was, through its actions in the public, um, and in private, I guess, too, yeah. uh, was was influencing the election. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah. Um, either you, you know, you're on Team Hillary and you're really upset about James Comey getting up in front of everybody and telling them um, that he thought that there was wrongdoing here, but it, that... You know, it wasn't intentional. Yeah. Even though that's kind of a non-issue. Uh, but <laughs> right. um, or you're on Team Trump, and you're like, well, they were going out of their way to try and um, you know surveil the entire campaign, and um, I think that they made it pretty clear with like the 
discussions between uh, Lisa Page and Peter Strzok yep. that we heard so much about that they were going out of their way to try and prevent Trump from becoming president in the first place. Absolutely. Um, and I, I don't think – he says that you know it wasn't political. Horowitz says it wasn't political. Yeah. Uh, I think that this is based on the idea that it, it may – it may not have been partisan. Yeah. Um, but not being partisan doesn't mean it's not political. Exactly. That's, yeah. <laughs> and so I don't think that it's about Trump being a Republican. Um, and, you know, well, yeah, just to because, just kind of follow through on some of that. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say because, you know, it's the lines, especially when you're dealing with Trump, aren't so straightforward as Republican and Democrat. Like, he's... He's not a normal politician in that way, and he 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 aims to disrupt the system. Mm-hmm. Um, so any establishment people, whether they're Republican or Democrat, are going to be against him by just by his nature. Yeah, you know. Well, I think there's some specific stuff in this one, um, but let's just go through some of the things. Um, so we have all these errors um, lean towards justifying the warrant uh, to undermine his candidacy. And then to delegitimize the election itself. Yeah. By saying that it was all influenced by Russia, that he wouldn't even be our president if it wasn't for foreign interference. Interference, yeah. Um, Then uh, there's that 60 Minutes interview where after he was elected, uh, McCabe, um, Andrew McCabe, who was then the FBI director after Comey was removed. Well, actually, let's throw that in there, too. Um, So right after Trump was elected... Um, they had their meeting in the, in the white house and, uh, you know, all these various department heads are, are talking to him and Comey hangs back afterwards, um, and talks to Trump privately and talks to him about the, that they had this information in the steel report, like the really salacious stuff that you were talking about <laughs> at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and does this kind of thing that really struck me as being odd at the time that it was reported. Yeah. Um, like, oh, this is so weird that he would you know that he would approach it in this manner yeah. um but he tells trump about all this salacious stuff and then i've listened to some ex ex-intelligence people that have talked about this and said that this was like clearly a shakedown yeah um that this is like totally j edgar hoover He's kind pulling of a hoover <laughs> yeah um where comey was like uh oh hey mr trump just so you know who's really in charge here um there's this really terrible information and it would sure be a shame if it got leaked to the press you know yeah. kind of thing and um but that you know trump not being a politician and not you know growing up in this weird backstabbing world of politics he grew up in the weird backstabbing world of business which is a different kind of backstabbing yeah. um and so he was like, oh, well, all that stuff's untrue. I don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? and so it didn't have the impact that it was supposed to. And uh, then um, the information was released. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, okay, well, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I think probably sometime down the road, maybe somebody told Trump or maybe he worked it out for himself that that, that what appears to have been happening is what was happening. Yeah. Um, that it was a shakedown, that it was a threat. Yeah. And he said, you know what, Comey, you're fired. <laughs> right. um, he gave, he took his next opportunity to, to fire coming. Yeah. Well, so then sometime that may not be how it went, but that's kind of the it impression that I get. It seems out that way at this yeah. point, right? That definitely is a logical explanation. And, uh, so then, um, McCabe had that 60 minutes interview that said that, um, where he said that, uh, Rod Rosenstein had talked to him about, uh, using the 25th amendment to remove Trump from office. Yeah. Um, and that he was taught, he was like counting votes. That he was literally trying to figure out who on the cabinet would agree with that. Yeah, if they um, had them enough people to pull it off. To do it. Yeah. Um, and so then, you know, so then there's their trying to use the Constitution there to remove Trump. Um, and then um, there are all these accusations and purported scandals, and they bring in the special counsel, um, which they said was to hamstring the president while in office. Well, yeah. if here he is. We can't get him out of office directly. Um, let's do what we can to... I think it's a cat trying to get in. Okay. Um, Sorry. Let's do what we can to make sure that he can't get anything done. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, and so we did this two-year investigation with Robert Mueller about Russiagate. Turned out to all be a bunch of codswallop. Um, although Which, there's plenty of people that would disagree with me on that point still, even though, you know, yeah. 
nothing came of it, really. No. Um, but that's not how it's being presented by some people. Either way. It's st- and it seems to me the whole the whole investigation, the whole Mueller investigation, seems, by their definition of interfering with an election, seems to have done that. I mean, that's the Democrats ran on that when they were running and took the House anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it just, it seems to me that you could, if, if anything that happens is a, is interfering with an election, yeah. like, I mean, it just, that whole deal just boggles my mind. Well, I don't, Christopher Steele is a foreign agent, if you're like going that way. He was British <laughs> yeah. intelligence. So. Right? I mean, yeah. it just seems like anything you do it could be classified under that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and in fact, you know, the day that Trump took office, or maybe it was the next day, but I think it was the day he took office, uh, there was a, a Washington Post headline um, that said, The campaign to impeach President Trump has begun. Yeah. And so as soon as this Mueller thing fizzled out and they didn't get anything out of it, then they jumped on this new Ukraine gate thing. It's like one thing after another. Yeah. And I suspect that when the Senate doesn't vote to remove him from office, um, they will uh, announce some new charges in the House. They only picked two charges. Why did they only pick two charges? It may be because they feel like they can make two a reasonable for now, case. Two for later? Yeah. I, I mean, it may be that they think that they can make a reasonable case on these two and, and maybe yeah. get it done. But it may be that, well, you don't want to throw all your stuff in at once because then when the Senate refuses to remove him from office, you're done. But if you do it just little by little, when this goes, you know, when this finishes, yeah. they may just file more articles tie, of impeachment. Yeah. Tie up the basically tie up the Congress with it until the next election. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, I say, you know what? Fine. If they're just <laughs> doing all their time spending all their time doing this, then they're not doing other stuff, but they are doing other stuff. But they're the signing that is, ridiculous twenty twenty NDAA. They're signing the giant omnibus bill for the uh well, and, spending. And with the impeachment going on, none of that's even getting talked about. Like, you hear you that, didn't... Spencer? I worked that in for you. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, but nobody's talking about any of that because they're so obsessed with impeachment yeah. that this other stuff isn't even getting headlines. Yeah, the stuff that's actually news yeah. isn't in the news. Exactly. And, um, you know, and so just to kind of try and wrap this up and then we'll we'll spend a little bit of time talking about impeachment. This is what I think that the FBI issue is about. Yeah. Is that Trump campaigned on this idea of ending these forever wars. Yeah. Um now he was talking about building up the military at the same time. So you know, but this is a guy who talks Take it out for of both, what it's worth. Yeah, yeah. This is a guy who talks out of both sides of his mouth. Has every time. Everything yeah. that he says you can find him saying the opposite to pretty much. Exactly. Um but the FBI changed after nine eleven. Yeah. Um, it was purely, well, not purely, but primarily a domestic um, law enforcement agency. Yeah. Um, and it's still, a, I guess, primarily a domestic law enforcement agency, but they have expanded their counterterrorism and counterintelligence stuff overseas yeah. by a tremendous degree. And they do get some of their funding. Um, from the Department of Defense now. Oh, okay. I didn't know. It's not just the Department of Justice that pays the FBI. Okay. Um, the Department of Defense uh, does fund the FBI to some degree, at the very least through the overseas contingency operations part of the budget. Um, and so what you have after 9-11 then is that you have the FBI uh, – competing with all of these other agencies and the military and the Department of State and all these other groups, Homeland Security, etc., um, for a piece of that giant, like, greater than a trillion dollar national defense and Homeland Security pie. Yeah. Right? And they have to justify their existence. Yep. Yep. And I, I think that, well, I mean, that's what leads to some of these uh, terrorist things where they, they find somebody dumb and impressionable and they lead him towards Doing being something. a radical and then they sell them the materials and then they arrest them. Yeah. Um, this happens all the time. Yeah. I, like all the time. Um, way more than it really seems like it should. And um, But I, I think that there was, there was a feeling of threat and I think this is probably true of a lot of agencies. There's a feeling of threat that they may not get the money after Trump was elected that they had been getting. Yeah. Wow. And that that's essentially what it's all about. And then, you know, this whole impeachment thing um, is just it's such a farce at this point. And the truth is that I think that if, if Trump did what they claimed that he did. Yeah. Now, 
what they claim that he did is not supported by the evidence. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it is to some degree, but it's all it's all speculation and hearsay. Yeah. There is no direct evidence. And I have found that people on the left generally don't look at evidence the same way that I do. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, hearsay, yeah, it's evidence, but it's not proof. Yeah. Um, I, I don't <laughs> Anyway. Uh, oh, and there's the whole argument from authority thing, uh, you know, because 97% of scientists agree, which is a bogus number to begin with. But even if it wasn't a bogus number to begin with, um, you know, 97% of scientists uh, believe that evolution was made up, um, that there, that the continents didn't move uh, you know, before these developments happened. Yeah. So, you know, when we have essentially proven that species change over time, um, where plate tectonics is in fact a thing, yeah. uh, you know, without a doubt, um, so on. But if he had actually done all these things, um, that he was actually using his office to um, try and influence the next election or to remove somebody who actually isn't a candidate exactly yet. It's somebody yeah. who's competing for a candidacy. So yeah. it, it's well, not, to, even then, it's not quite as bad as the claim is made, I think. Yeah. But um, anyway, even if that, if all that stuff were true, then I think that that's impeachable. Yeah. Well, it, if you don't believe that the Bidens didn't do anything, and that's kind of my question is, okay, so if, if the Bidens do you my question I always ask is do you think anything was corrupt with the Bidens with the Ukraine deal with the I mean and if you believe that there's corruption there then there's he has every right to ask them to investigate it mm-hmm. it happened in their country yeah um I mean he he it seems to me he has the right to ask them to do that um it I mean I don't know I, I do think that you can make a good case that it is in the national interest yeah. to know if the potential next president of the United States um, was engaged in corrupt dealings during his last time in the White House. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's more than fair. Yeah. Um, um, and I just, I don't see how you can be for impeachment if you don't believe, if you don't, if, I mean, I just don't. Well, and the <laughs> the issue kind of becomes here, like, what what is required to be impeachment worthy yeah um and so uh so we're going to play this clip here from um, nancy pelosi where she was asked um about how she was opposed to impeaching george bush uh for the iraq war stuff and she was opposed to impeaching trump now or, or not now the previously yeah um but you know what's different now and so she goes into this thing about the iraq war that is just it's very telling of how how things work with these people so I would say. <laughs> yeah um uh so let's just listen to what uh nancy pelosi has to say about this and then we'll we'll be back in a moment ranking member on the intelligence committee uh even before i became part of the leadership a gang of four so i knew there were no nuclear weapons in iraq it just wasn't there they had to show us they had to show the gang of four all the intelligence they had. The intelligence did not show that uh, that, that was the case. So I knew it was a, a misrepresentation to the public. But having said that, it was, a, in my view, uh, not a ground for impeachment. Okay. Um, well, it, it's kind of amazing to me <laughs> that uh, lying about a war, yeah. lying to get us into war, that's what I should say. Yeah. I mean, if lying about a war was empty, then we'd have to get Bush, Obama, and Trump just because of the Afghanistan papers that came last week, right? But <laughs> yeah. um, lying to get us into a war is doesn't seem impeachment. Doesn't rise to the level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not worthy of impeachment. Um, but refusing to sell weapons um, to a not exactly an ally... Yeah. But whatever. We'll say ally just to appease them. Yeah. Um, to refusing to sell weapons to an ally um, to help them wage war against an adversary. Um, and even adversary, I think, is kind of strong, although not anymore. But not yeah. an enemy in yeah. Russia. And look into the uh, why the Russians are in Ukraine anyway. They're not there invading the Ukraine. They're there helping the eastern Ukraine region, the Donbass region, defend themselves from their own government. All right. <laughs> 
Well, you would not get that story from the media at all, by the way. Like, they yeah. are all in with Russia is taking over Ukraine yeah. <laughs> by but, force. <laughs> I mean, but I'm just blown away by Nancy Pelosi there. Like, yeah. I listen to that, and I think, well, we need to go back and impeach George Bush. Yeah. And we need to impeach Nancy Pelosi and anybody else in this gang of four who yeah. knew that there were no weapons of mass destruction. Oh, I did also find it interesting that she says um, that, you know, she was aware that there were no weapons of mass destruction. So she knew that the public was being misled. No, lied to. Yeah. All yeah. right. You're talking about using real language, you know, direct language. You know, we want to talk about uh, that he wasn't um, asking for an investigation to Biden. He was wanting him to dig up dirt um, that, you know, we need to call it uh, bribery, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Well, here's one for you. No, they weren't misleading the public. They were lying to the public yeah. openly. To, and you knew it and you voted for this war. Yeah, to get us into a war that, by the way, we're still freaking in. Yeah. Like, we're still there. This has been almost 20 years ago. Yeah. 19, I guess. Hundreds of thousands of people have died. Yeah, yeah. For a war that you knew. And she's been in office all this time. Yeah. All this time. She's been there. But somehow that little lie uh, doesn't Didn't rise, rise to, to the, the level, level of impeachment. No. No, crazy, yeah. insane. Yeah. Moment, of, a moment of truth from the great speaker. Yeah, I. <laughs> oh, I do. Well, no, I don't want to use somebody else's joke. We're gonna just move on from there. Yeah. Um, although Dave Smith said something funny about that about her stuttering and stumbling over herself that just cracked me up. Okay. Um, you, you know, should go, since, you give him credit. You can say it. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> he just said, you know, it's it's funny to listen to her stutter and stumble. Essentially, he's like, I, I know that I, you know, mispronounce things and trip over words sometimes and so forth. Um, but I'm a comedian. I don't have speaker in my job title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Right. <laughs> if you're going to have this title, you need to be able to do it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's good. Well, um, Let's let's move into your thing. I don't have like a real smooth transition into yeah. the Virginia well, stuff. The other thing we wanted to talk about tonight was just kind of what's some of the stuff that's been going on in Virginia as far as gun control and things of that nature. So I've, I've done some reading and done some looking. We had some articles submitted by a fan, and I read through those. And um, the big what basically what's going on over there. I is, read one of them. <laughs> Did you? I read both of them, and I and I've done some more digging on my own, so I could kind of get an idea of what what's going on out there. Because I had heard about this, but I hadn't really sunk my teeth into it. Yeah. But um, basically, Democrats have taken over Virginia, and they ran when my understanding is is when they ran for office, they ran on a very very strong gun control campaign, mm -hmm. and they won. And so now they're looking to enact some of these things that they campaigned on. Yeah. Um, and they, I mean, they sound pretty, pretty strict. I mean, they're not, they're not really bashful about <laughs> wanting yeah. to take guns. Yeah. And it's gotten to the point that a bunch of the counties have started like passing provisions and basically using the same idea as the sanctuary cities for illegal immigrants mm -hmm. that we've already seen in California and some of these places. Yeah. They're using these same type tactics and to be sanctuary counties for Second Amendment people, mm -hmm. um, which is an interesting concept. When when you first mentioned it to me the other day, I was like, man, like, wouldn't that be like amazing if it was like a really true Second Amendment? Like, so I didn't have like fully automatic weapons and anything I want. Yeah. Like, we're, we're not going to use our resources to enforce any gun laws. Any at gun all. laws at all? That would be amazing. Yeah, that's not really what's happening. No. <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect. It to be. I wouldn't expect it to be either. But man, wouldn't I that wish be, it were. But wouldn't uh, that be awesome? But no, that's not the case actually. But um, that's a good way to keep the government out of your backyard. Though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> man. Maybe we need to run for office and push for something. Like, yeah, I got I, some ideas. I ran for office once. It sucked. <laughs> yeah, it does suck. But, man, like, that's, I don't know. I'm just saying that would be amazing. But that's basically what's going on. And it's gotten to the point, it's all just talk right now. They haven't actually passed any legislation regarding any of this stuff. But they plan well, to. Well, the counties have. Well, the counties have. My bad. The counties have. But the, the Democrats haven't actually. It's, it's on their agenda for 2020. So yeah. this is a fight that's coming. Um, and I think as time goes along, right now I haven't heard, I mean, until Spencer, I had heard about it, but it wasn't, it hasn't been in the media much, but I mm -hmm. think this is going to be a big fight come 2020 because the, um, governor has actually said that if, if lo local law enforcement won't 
enforce these laws that he'll bring in the national guard and make them do it now my initial reaction is well if you can't get like local law enforcement to do it Mm -hmm. you really think that you're going to get the national guard to do it and maybe you can i mean you tell them to do something maybe they'll do it or maybe they'll do the same thing the locals are doing i was like yeah um the the response from the national guard was very non-committal uh, however, it certainly did not give the impression that they had any intention of enforcing unconstitutional laws. Yeah. Um, and I just, I just find that if, if you're passing laws that you're having the, that law enforcement won't enforce, to me, that's a form of nullification. It is. Absolutely. Um, and it means you shouldn't be passing these laws. I mean, mm-hmm. if you can't even get them to be enforced, I mean, that's the definition of a tyrannical government. Yeah. Like, well, you know, the thing I say all the time is that our our vision of government structure is upside down. We think that the concentration of power is at the top, yep. and I think that the concentration of power should be at the bottom. And yep. for me, every level of government um, is there to protect you from the level above. Yeah. Like, your city government is there to protect you from your county government. Your county <laughs> government is to protect you from your state government. And your state government is there to protect you from the federal government. And honestly, like, talk, once again, talking about running for office, I don't know. I'm just saying that would be a, if you could get that onto like a bumper sticker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that would be a good campaign. I think a lot of people would get behind that because I think I think a lot of the country at least recognizes that that governing from the top just doesn't work. We got, we kind of just accept it because mm-hmm. that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I, I think a lot of people would believe that that it's just it's better. The closer your government is, the better. Yeah. Well, it's back to this crazy democratic idea of uh, of tyranny by the majority. Yeah. Um, the idea that so we're certainly in favor of decentralization all the way down. Oh yeah. Um, you know, to us the ultimate political unit is the individual. Yeah. Right. Like, not the it, exactly from the bottom up, not yeah. from the top down. Yeah. Um, and a part of that reason is that this is a country of 330 million people. Yeah. Uh, all from different backgrounds. Um, different parts of the countries have have different you know, customs to some degree, um, and stresses and and various social mores. Um, the idea that you can have one system to work for all is, is just insane. Um, there's no way that you can satisfy everybody. And And the idea that if you can't satisfy everybody, you take the majority into hell with the rest. That's not a good way of running a government. No, and and it kind of goes back to some of the problems we're having nationally now, as far as like, People are the country is so split. Like I mean, just a few percentage points off. All I mean, mm-hmm. even like take the last election. I mean, it it came down to the to the electoral college. You yeah. know, because it's it we're so split in so many ways. Like democracy isn't necessarily. Well, and the electoral college is another example of them trying not to make the federal level a democracy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And well, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, well, the, the whole thing is, is certainly an issue. Now the governor has the power over the national guard. Of course, you know, we've learned with these, um, these attempts to change government the contrast between Venezuela and Bolivia, um, is proven once again, that you only have power if you've got the military behind you. Exactly. So if the national guard doesn't back the governor, then they have nothing. Yeah, um, exactly. They don't have as and much even as they even think. if the National Guard, so like the leaders at the National Guard say, okay, we're going to go and we're going to start because uh, let me read from the article or article I read. This is from the Washington Post, okay. just to, so we can kind of get an idea of what's being discussed here. So, um, and this is so when the General Assembly convenes in January, Governor Ralph Norum has promised to move quickly with Democratic leaders to pass measures such as universal background checks, limits on the type and number of firearms a person can purchase, and red red flag laws allowing authorities to seize weapons from someone deemed a threat. Without due process. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just assumed. Yeah. But the one that really got me is um, the number and type of firearms a person can have. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that, that goes towards confiscation. Oh no! They have talked about confiscation, as I understand it. Yeah, I, and um, that's that. Well, that's the reason I wanted to kind of. That's why people preemptively started throwing up all, all these resolutions in their counties to yeah. 
prevent it to from prevent happening. that from happening. Now, so, but my point. So I wanted to read that just to kind of get to the point, though. Mm-hmm. That okay. So if the leaders of the National Guard are like, okay, we're gonna we're with the governor. We're gonna go in and start confiscating these guns. What if the people of the National Guard are the actual people who have to go start knocking on doors? Like, I'm not doing that. Yeah. I'm not. I mean, I would. I mean, like, I, do, what, you, do you, you want that? me to get into a confrontation with a gun-owning American? Yeah, yeah. No, it ain't happening. Yeah. It ain't happening. And and I think that's where you will end up, is even if the National... And I think the National Guard will realize pretty quick that we're not going to ask our guys to do this because at the end of the day, they won't do it. Mm-hmm. But even if they do ask them to do it, there's... I just... I see no way that they'll follow through and do it. That's just that's just my opinion, but yeah. Um, and the whole idea is insane, anyway. I mean, I'm obviously against gun control, but to, the whole idea that you're going to take weapons from law-abiding citizens mm-hmm. is just asking for violence. And if the whole idea for if you if you are a person that is a gun control advocate, you're basically advocating for violence, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Because somebody's going to have the guns, and somebody's going to come get them. Yeah. Well, red flag laws create really antagonistic interactions between law enforcement and, and law-abiding people. Exactly. Um, and, well, you know, there's the old adage, uh, if firearms are outlawed, only outlaws have firearms. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or something like that. Something like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah, the point's well made, though. Yeah. So. Well, and then, of course, you do have the uh, the, you know minor problem of the second amendment um which yeah. says explicitly that there will be no infringement on the right to bear arms and what this really comes down to is the right to defend yourself yeah absolutely like, yeah that's because, really what this and is and a lot of a lot of the stuff i was reading talking about this was talking about hunting and things like that but mm-hmm. i mean i just kind of tune all that out because that's not what it's about I yeah. mean, it's we didn't we didn't pass this we didn't have the Second Amendment written into the Constitution to protect us from deer. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely true, uh, and it was to allow people to train. Actually, yeah. like that's explicitly what it was about. That's what the statement of um, the of uh, well trained militia being essential to a free state. Yeah, um, that's what they're talking about. Uh, militia is not state controlled. National Guard is not a militia. Yeah. Um, the militia is the group of locals that get together and train on the weekends. It's and, me and, and you when we go out shooting. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 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 If we start running like real drills instead of just, how many poles can I put in the middle of the target? Um, <laughs> well, man, I'd love to go do that sometime. Yeah, I would too. I make make a note of that in your little book. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> We I need to go shoot. I can't get like, Dad off the couch, and that's the thing that he was most fun doing. Um, anyway, uh, so like that's what it's really about is having the ability to – train with firearms from a actually from a very early age yeah so you're comfortable with them you know how to use them you know how to defend yourself and the whole thing is about it's it's about the fear of a um of a government that becomes authoritarian and tyrannical and does things like takes your guns away yeah right <laughs> yeah that, that's the whole purpose of this um and i just i really i fear that a lot of people don't understand like and even like so i know some people that are gun control guys mm -hmm. um and it amazes me the level of that they're okay with guns being taken away from people but they don't trust cops at all like the they they have this fear of police that like i I just the two just doesn't jive to me yeah you know i mean well, you yeah. realize you take the guns away from everybody the police will be the only people who have guns yeah it, well and to draw this back around um if you think we have a manchurian candidate that the, our government is now controlled by the russians through donald trump <laughs> but you believe that gov- the government should be the only people that has guns yeah yeah let's let's try and work all that out. i mean how do you how you sort that all out and rationalize it i just i i don't know yeah. And like I say, I mean, I, I, I have in-depth conversations with these people, and we go back and forth with it. I just, I can't, I've yet to have it put to me in a way that I can rationalize it. Yeah. Was it Samuel Adams, I think, said uh, that the rights of the colonists are these, um, first, life, second, liberty, and third, the um, right to protect and defend those things through the best means they see possible? Absolutely. Um, th- this whole thing is a... The right to bear arms is a corollary of the right to life. If you go back to first principles, I mean, if you if if I can convince you that your life at the very least belongs to you, which I hope that I can convince you of that, yeah. or, you know, if you believe in a God, that, you know, the your life belongs to God, 
Yeah. Maybe it's harder to make this argument, but I still think that uh, that um, that God gave you a, a duty to protect yourself, to yeah. protect that life. Well, um, and this is what that is. Like you have to be able to defend yourself. There's also the the joke that I you know I carry a gun because I can't carry a cop. Yeah, all right. I mean, look at response times wherever you are, yeah. and just think how long it takes to pull a trigger. And and I like that analogy because who would want to carry a cop anyway? I don't want a cop knowing everything I do. <laughs> One of my one of my favorite stories is a um, guy was having a dinner party uh, at his house, and um, there was a an older uh, progressive woman there, and somehow it got on. They got onto the topic of uh, of guns, uh, and he was he like he was a gun owner, yeah. and um and she said uh, she got upset about it, and she was like, uh, well, I mean, I hope if you have guns in here that at least they're not loaded, and he said, well, of course they're loaded. Uh, they don't do any good if they're not loaded. And right. and she said, uh, well, are you so afraid that somebody's going to kick down your door and, and try and take something from you or, or try and kill you? And he said, no, I'm not really that scared of that. I'm not really that scared that my house is going to burn down. But I have fire extinguishers and they're all loaded too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. They nailed it on the head. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not afraid of anybody breaking in here because I'm prepared if they do. Yeah. Hey, I'm an Eagle Scout. <laughs> Be prepared. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. Well, I, we had another topic, but we are yeah. already over an hour. I, I told you we were going to go long on this one, buddy. Yeah. Well, I thought that we would get to this stuff. That's all right. I have notes for next time. It's yeah. not something that has to be addressed necessarily immediately. Um, although I do think it's important. Yeah. But anyway, so I got notes for next time then. Um, I didn't realize that we were going to take so much time on the IG report. I there was, there's just it. a lot to 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 unpack with the IG report. Yeah. Um, there, there just is. Yeah. And, and the same thing with the, with the Virginia stuff. I mean, like there's, you know, yeah, guns are important. Okay. So <laughs> the moral of the story is don't trust your government. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the moral of every podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like everyone we, just, we do is instead just, of the Liberty Mike, it should just be don't trust your don't government. Don't trust your government. <laughs> it's too late to buy a new domain. <laughs> no. Ooh. No. Unless uh, somebody gets to it first, but um, yeah. they're gonna have to get to it pretty fast. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I guess we'll the then we'll just kinda wrap it up there with don't trust your government. Um and uh then I'll, I'll get the clips in there and we'll, you know, we'll have a podcast. Huh? Um, so, okay, we're getting on towards the end of the year. We have had submissions for uh, the intro, outro. Um, Very excited. I do want to say that I don't want to sh- restrict you to music. I mean, I would like for it to have a music bed, but if you want to, like, you know, put clips together or something, yeah. that works too. Um, yeah, I've heard so, some, some stuff that was really fun. People that knows what they're doing have put together some fun stuff like that so, yeah i mean that would be cool too yeah absolutely um so I, I think you know we're closing this at the end of the year um by the way right now hey john if you're free over the holidays yeah man come over and we'll record that stuff in <laughs> in you know the good mic um and uh yeah that's uh so anybody else though that um if you haven't submitted anything and you have some interest in submitting stuff it's Please do. Yeah, it's a it's an open competition right now. Yeah, um, and that's not to say once we have something, we may we'll change things around from that's time true too. to time. That's true I too. mean, you know, so variety is the spice of life. Absolutely. Um, and anyway, but I, I, at least for now, I was going to say that we're probably closing the closing that yeah. at the end of the year because we want to get something together yeah, pretty soon. I was going to say, yeah, sometime after the end of the year, we want to go on and have that set up. Yeah. So. Um, and then of course all the normal stuff, uh, follow us on Facebook, subscribe on iTunes, um, or Podbean, uh, like, and share, comment, um, tell your friends, etc. Yep. Etc. I don't have a new article this week. I do have some emails to send out though. Um, I was going to try and, uh, and make some contacts, uh, going into this new year about, some things that are coming up, maybe some interviews that we can do, um, maybe uh, land ourselves on some bigger platforms than fun. the LibertyMike.com. Yeah. Um, I mean, I expect it to be really big someday. <laughs> All right, uh, but it's slow going. Still building. Um, it's slow going. Got a you know, got a network, and I've never really been that good at networking, but I'm working on it. Absolutely. 
And um, all right. I, well, I guess that's it. Uh, so join us. We will be here the day after Christmas uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try and stay free. Try and how you fight. Ciao. Later.